wonder if I'm going to go back to that. We'll see. It's because the character's name wasn't G, that's why. Top G Thanos. Bruv. <laughs> Where'd you get your hit um, in the PB? If you type in exclamation point uh, last hit, there's a link. It'll show you a video clip. It was on Stormvale Castle on the staircase. Some dude decided to hit me with a crossbow. I ran a little bit too far up the one staircase, and one of the arrows from the three of them, they went around the rock. You would hate yourself if you attempted that. I was enjoying it quite a bit, but uh, there just wasn't enough time to beat it before this came out. How do you dodge of or avoid waterfowl dance usually? Uh, I think you run away from the first part, and then you dodge into the second part, and the last part misses you. Because when you dodge on the second part, you dodge past Millennia. She goes behind you. And then you kind of just keep backing up after you've dodged past her, and it, the rest of it will just stop. It's on the second combo you dodge in. You should be able to farm to get plus three on Gascoin. Okay, okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna be unbelievably ultra instinct focused on this run because we were doing so good earlier I, gotta, I still have that power today we got to channel it again like my focus earlier was so freaking crazy man you could feel it i just and like we were moving at a way faster pace than normal too frost what's up dude your hello fresh gets here tomorrow hope you're not just disappointed wait Deidre, did you use the li the link did you use my code? I wonder if the goal is broken, dude. Because I was wondering, I'm like... You did? Thought you were the first one? No, yo, I bet you there's more than one person that's used it, and it's probably broken or something. Because it's supposed to... Like... It might be the, the the actual thing. Yeah, I was at zero for a long time. I, I bet you you're not the only person that's used it. Because a lot of other people were asking questions about it, like saying they were going to... It's showing three now. Oh, is it? Does it say three right now? Well, thank you for whoever is the three that that did. Because on my screen, it looks like zero, but I might be wrong. Um, thank you for doing that, dude. I really appreciate that. That does support the stream a ton if you don't even realize. Even if we don't hit the goal, it still supports the stream a ton. I just wanted to make an extra incentive where if we hit the 100, that we do a crazy marathon in November. Like a 14 to 16 hour stream, basically. <laughs> where I would be live from probably 9 in the morning to like, three in the morning the next day or something like that. I don't know. Obviously, I'd take some breaks. We would, we would like stretch, probably do a bunch of crazy stuff, you know, eat and stuff. But yeah, I want to do um, a marathon of Demon Souls to Elden Ring, everything in between all the games, seven of them, back to back, speed run every, sing every single thing. So that would be, it would be at least like two hours a game minimum, I'm, I'm guessing. So that's 14 hours there. Give or take more for breaks and me being slow on something, but I think if we, because we got this game down pretty fast. I can play turning to aid you. Like I could do a speedy run any percent on this pretty damn quick. Then summon me. Ah, I bequeath. Without glitches. Use it. It will summon. And then it's just de-rusting everything else. Sekiro would be the hardest to de-rust, I think, at this point, because I can still play Bloodborne good. I can play Demon Souls perfectly fine. Play Dark Souls one to three perfectly fine. Two would take a little bit of time because I haven't played it for a while, so it'd be like two and a half hours probably. But it would be cool to do a like a glitchless speedrun of everything, back to back. World record pace, oh yeah. The text in the background's all white. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see, I guess. Sure, there's somebody out there that's gonna try to do a Godwin challenge with Elden Ring in the mix. Oh, it's already been done, dude. You didn't hear about that? Bushido, sorry, Bushido, uh, he got the God Run three, a seven game back to back hitless. That was like, uh, like probably a, like when we were first starting to do this challenge, or not too long after, like weeks ago. And then Hob was trying it for a little bit, and Dino's still doing it right now. I don't think Dino got it yet, but he got five games on it or something like that. So. 
I don't know what Bushido was doing, dude. He must have been on the Kool-Aid or something like that. He must have been on some some sports enhancing supplements to be able to <laughs> pull that one off like so quickly. It's not that I'm not even surprised that he did it. It's just he did it so fast after the game came out, in my personal opinion, because there's one thing about learning the run on this, but then you have to still be consistent on all the other games. And my guess is the reason he did it so fast, like legitimately was because he just did the God Realm of Six games before, or he was playing the other games consistently. He was on game seven a few days ago. That's that's wild, dude. Imagine being seven games in, back to back hitless, and you fail. I can't even relate because I've only I've only had that on game three, and then I had it on game four of the uh the master run, that's it. And game four is different than the last game, right? So if it's game five, then I could be like, okay, I kinda get it. That's wild. Truly run in thy veins. Tarnished. Perry game on 9,000. Not the first time through, though, unfortunately. Tarnished. Smoldering with thy meager flame. Cower in fear. Just imagine him doing adjustments on the fly, fresh into the game. That's mind blowing. I, I can't imagine it. Dude, the, the beginning, like, what was, I don't even know what Bushido's last game was, but I'm just imagining the beginning of Dark Souls 3 on that, or even, dude, the beginning of this, imagine dying on the setup or something, it would be so stupid. Uh, Leon, this playlist is under the command RF in chat, exclamation point RF. And then my personal playlist that plays before the stream starts is exclamation point playlist. He did Elden Ring last? Okay, I see. Yeah, that's that's scary, man. Uh, that's, that's a whole different kind of thing. Like, I know Dino does take... Like, if we're talking about Dino's run again, I, I think that you were talking about Bushido, right, Killa? But yeah, I know for Dino, he like takes this really seriously. Like he he's really hard on himself too. So the amount of pressure he must have felt, and then like, I hope he didn't get beat him out, beat himself up too badly, because uh, that's a pretty impressive thing to do, even if he didn't get it. Because that means he did technically, like if he was on Elden Ring for the last one, I don't think he probably was for Dino, because I think he does it pretty early. But he essentially did like somewhat of a God Run, like the second God Run, again. Which is silly. And, and, you know, if you don't want to call it that, then just some insane gauntlet. At the very least. Casual God Run, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> imagine, like, years ago we were talking about this. Like, I, I would be laughing, dude. I'd be, like, foaming at the mouth Hello? laughing. Can you hear me? Help. Oh. I, at least. My... Just give and I'll pop. Don't dally. Give it your all. I. Ah. Ow. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> well, I. Oh. Wait, I see. I see it now. Humans all lose their wits eventually. How could this? <laughs> Was my whole existence just a crock? Crack, we were talking about Bushido and Dino as well, because they were both doing the God Run 3, and I know Hob was doing it for a little bit too. Does anybody know if Hob's going to go back to it? Because he was playing some uh, Warzone the last time I checked. Which is interesting, because I didn't think he still played Warzone. I think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a new Call of Duty, isn't there? Or maybe, maybe the beta's done now. I wonder if it meet Yo, if Hob plays the new Call of Duty, because I have a pre-order for it, and... Um, 
Like, I, I actually screwed up. I didn't mean to pre-order it, but I did. Don't even ask how that happened. It was a huge mix-up. I literally thought I was getting something else. But I'm going to play it. A little bit. Like, I'm going to try it, obviously, because I bought it. But can't refund it on PlayStation Store. <laughs> so if he gets the new COD on PS5, I'll play it with him. He's playing Warzone right now. Nice. Yeah, the new one's just MW2 Remastered. Uh, it doesn't seem like his heart is in the God Run 3. I think it definitely changes after somebody gets it. Like, if he was going to be the first one to try to get it, um, and then someone else did, you know, it's it's different. And also on top of that, too, he was the originator of the marathon runs, and now there's just people snatching them up, just doing them, you know, so many people are doing them now, it's different, right? He's not the only person doing it. And so he probably gets a lot of people talking about, like, oh, you, what do you think about this person doing it? Like, oh, do you know that this person did it, too? It's like, it, that kind of thing doesn't help with the focus of it. And then even if you didn't consider all that stuff, which might not even bother him, just it's a big run, so gotta take breaks from it. Pretty sure it's cross platform. Okay. Getting sniped by somebody on PC with aimbot. To see what it seems But the console has aim assist. That's what all the PC players are gonna say. Plate. But you have aim assist. The plan on buying anything on Black Friday tools? I, I don't personally know. Um, unless I see something I actually need. There's nothing in particular I think I actually need right now. Uh, maybe I'd have to see by the time it gets around to Christmas. Uh, what about you? What about you guys? Is there anything that you're trying to get for Black Christmas? Or Black, Black Friday, not Black Christmas. The dark Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> the evil Christmas, black Christmas, yeah. Canceled? No, well, not even like that, though. I just mean, I meant like the dark Christmas. Christmas of death. It's the horror, it's the, the new horror movie. Actually, Black Christmas is literally a movie, dude. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. I think there's been more than one iteration of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a movie. It is a movie, okay, yeah, because I saw, like, a newer version of it, and it was terrible. It was such a bad movie, dude. The people, dude, the guy was getting, like, chased around the fucking, like, living room and the kitchen and stuff like that. I'm like, you guys don't even, like, run away from people in a way that makes sense, like... It's not even like the, oh, I tripped, I fell. Like, I'm like, the decision making in this movie is making me lose brain cells right now. It's like too obviously bad. It's just so impossible in real life that someone would screw that up. And there's so many opportunities for the people to like escape perfectly. And the dude trying to kill people is not even freaking running, dude. He's just walking through the freaking house slowly. He's like, I'm, I'm so cool. Some fucking guy with a mask on. I was like, what are you doing? We need movies where killers run as fast as they can and people fucking try to escape and are smart about it. Don't run around in circles and hide behind things that don't cover their, their bodies, you know? It's like, <laughs> I'm just gonna go, and then I'm safe. Like, what is that? Halloween style horrors, yeah. The, the Michael Myers walk. I actually like Halloween though. Like, cause Michael Myers actually is scary. Like he's legitimately scary because he just never dies. And that's like just a very, it, it's kind of cheesy, but it's like just kind of a made up thing, right? But in a movie where it's like believable or the things could happen, I'm just like, man, if they made it just a little bit more realistic, I'd like it. Uh, Joel, I'm doing pretty good, how are you, man? We're on stream number two. Scream had some good moments. Original Scream was pretty good. It wasn't too bad. I think that was one of the first horror movies I saw in my life. Uh, looking to buy a new monitor. Don't know if it'll fit onto your desk, though. Oh, man, that's always the struggle. I'm so glad that I got uh, the desk... Um, 
like the standing one the same size as my original one because if I didn't, dude, the monitors I have literally just fit on it. Just enough room, so you gotta be careful and like measure it before usually. But if you can't fit it on your desk, could you ever could you mount it, do you think? Like with a bracket that goes onto the desk or a wall mount? Because someone sent me a pretty cool link to a online one where you can like you can clamp a mount onto the desk. And then it's a bracket that holds the monitors kind of like on the wall, but you don't have to have a wall behind it. And then they extend past the desk so it can be floating, right? Looking into it, nice, nice. Yeah, because for me, I might actually grab that myself so I can have the monitors higher up when we get the standing desk all the way to the top. Since uh, at the top of it, I still have to look down a little bit. Horror cult movie where the good people actually kill off a community of psychos. Yes, that's what I mean. See, if I wrote a horror movie, it would be really good, in my opinion. I've watched pretty much all the like the hardcore ones, and I've watched like every single kind of genre and all the extreme crazy ones that exist. So, I would I would make an insanely good horror movie. If it just came down to me writing it, maybe I wouldn't be the filmer or the cinematographer or the uh, you know hiring the actors, but I would just write a good story for it. I think most people that watch quite a bit of horror probably could do the same. Did I like Saw? I don't I don't mind Saw movies. They're okay. They're not my favorite though. Saw for me is kind of just fun. It's like just like, okay, let's see what kind of crazy thing they make that is completely just out of this world weird or whatever. Nope, I never watched actually. I gotta watch that. That's the alien movie by Jordan Peele, right? I've seen Us and I've seen um, Get Out. Those are both pretty good. Quack, what's up, dude? For you, it was amazing. You actually really liked it. It got some like pretty mixed reviews, but I feel like weird movies always do. I, did, I wasn't a huge fan of Candyman. Candyman, like, I, I wanted to love Candyman, dude. I went to, that was one of the few movies I was so excited for, I watched it by myself. Like, I went to the movie theater by myself. And I've only done that for two movies. So, yeah, that was not a successful experience. I, I, I was, like, so drawn into it for, like, the first half of the movie, and then it just kind of took a turn. So I was like, oh, man, that sucks. Got review bombed by some very suspicious people. Did it? Damn. Ever seen that of Loving Dead 90s remake? I think I might have seen that a long time ago. Because the, re the remake's pretty old too, isn't it? Get Out was fire. Get Out was so good, dude. I watched that twice. Oh, no. I'm missing it. Tom Savini directed it? Okay. Yeah, I gotta double check and see if I've seen that. Original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is still your favorite of all time. That's a really good movie. The do you, Have you seen the 2013 Texas Chainsaw? That was my favorite personally. I just like the, the way they set it up and everything. The guy was like locked in the basement. He was in the basement of the house and the, the main character's cousin and then she just like goes and checks the house out and he's, he's just like locked up and then I think they become friends. I think they like he like helps her at the end or something like that. It's kind of funny. And then the new one was garbage in my opinion. I did not like the new one. The bus was pretty cool. Like the fact there's the party bus and he just goes in and corners everybody. Like that's a good setup for something that's kind of spooky. But the execution and like the writing and just the the, the screen time, the development of all of it, they could have expanded it beyond so just you know what they showed in that movie so the world might be mended like it was okay with the pacing but just there's not enough stuff in it and they didn't hype like they didn't really hype the character up as much i don't know it's kind of weird oh my 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 this guy forget about me no probably not well, maybe he will 
Oh, he's playing some games here. You're in an evil dead mood right now. Um, the uh, the old school or the, the one that was the remake in 2013? I was in the new one. You only heard bad things, unfortunately. Really? Okay. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like, maybe I just... Some of the movies I like are pretty bad. Like, <laughs> Silent Hill, the original. I like that. That that was pretty agreeable upon most uh, horror fans. It was a good movie. But then the second Silent Hill, I enjoy as well. And that was what I understand as a bad movie. Uh, Zerzi, thank you for the 38 months. Welcome back. Are you doing Quiet Place? Both of those are really good. Watching the show right now gives you that nice old school vibe. Is the show worth watching? Like, how does it compare to the movies? They flipped the narrative. The cops are the bad ones in the 2013. Yeah, pretty much. I, I really enjoyed that story. It was cool. The Mist. I haven't seen The Mist. I've heard it's good, though. I need to see the mist. I need to see the thing. I need to see what, like, and there's another like old school or older horror movie I need to see as well. I can't remember what it's called. Evil Dead has a series apparently, and it's got a game now too. Blair Witch Project. That's a good movie. Isn't there um, like, like a new Blair Witch? Or like there's a new movie about something similar made by the person that made that? Blair Witch Project were legitimately scary. <laughs> Dude, that's basically what happened when I went into the fucking forest. If you guys are okay, if you can go on Discord, anyone that can join Discord right now, you guys were asking me, because I went on a spooky walk, it was in a haunted forest, where people were murdered and stuff like that. Guided tour, and um, people had a bunch of experiences and stuff like that, and I took, so okay, I was with um, someone that took pictures, and he sent me the pictures, and I put the, the craziest picture in the Discord, where I was trying to say, can you guys explain what's going on in that picture to me? Can you, can you debate me on it and justify that that's not ghost activity in the picture? So if you're willing to like not maybe, you know, bother your sleep schedule, <laughs> if you're like very like, you know, faint of, uh, you know, certain images or whatever, this guy took the picture. I was looking at the lady. We were both facing her head on this, this tour guide. And there's people in the corner you can see, but there's no one beside her in this picture that he took. But in the picture, there's a fucking shadow that's seven feet tall with fucking wispy, like fog shit coming off of it. And then there's a literal fucking orb that's blue floating in the fucking air. <laughs> and now that I looked closer, there's there's two shadows, dude. There's two things standing beside her. So can you justify and tell me how that's possible, please? And like the lady's face is covered. I, when I when he took the picture, I was looking at him. I was looking at his phone, and you could see the lady's face, and we were both looking at her, and you could see her. So nothing nothing was going on. There, like on that left side of the picture, if you go check the Discord right now in general, there should be bushes beside her that you can see that are green. You can't see the bushes, they're gone. And there's like fucking figures beside it. So, please try to somehow like justify, no justification, you've seen orbs like that before, that stuff's real. Okay, so you saw that Joker, you, 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 you can't even understand the picture staring at it. Okay, so basically I tried to explain, it's just supposed to be a lady that's in like a Bloodborne kind of outfit. And she's, you can see her face and you can see her hands and she's in front of a lantern. And she's telling us a story beside a bunch of trees. And they're, the only people in the picture should be the people on the right side. But the, you have to tell me there's something else going on there. It's a reflection from the light in the camera lens. There, there's no light. There is no light, dude. The lantern's light was not bright enough. That's the thing. It was very dim, dude. It was like to the point where I'm telling you, there is no light source pointing at the camera. <laughs> Like, and also, okay, so Jill, what's the blue thing? What's the blue thing, dude? Like, when I tell you this lantern wasn't bright, like, it, it was very dim, dude. It was very dim. 
Shadow looks like it's from the lantern from the handles. The orb looks like a light off in the distance. There, okay, so the orb, literally, okay, the the for the forest itself, dude. There's no exposure to like the skies above where the picture was taken. There's no opening in the in the distance. There's nothing there. So the orb thing, like, if, okay, fine, I'll take it, take it for what it's worth. The the shadows could be like a reflection, whatever. Let's just say say that that's the case. How can you explain the orb when there's no exposure to anything in general in the distance? It's just dense forest. That's it. You can't see the road from there. We were in the thick of the forest. There's no reflectors on the... Like, you can even see the tree. There's a reflector on the tree, and it's not even shining that bright. There's no lights in the air. It's, it's not the sky. How can you have a blue orb floating in there? And the weirdest thing is there was other pictures taken, and some of them had the orbs, some of them didn't. But like the orb didn't look the same in all of them. They were, they were really fucking weird. It's a big old nope. Yeah, like the dude. I'm telling you. It's it's weird. How does your phone take 640 grainy pictures in 2022 toy? That wasn't my camera. It was a, uh, a friend that uh, took it. People won't believe shit till they experience it themselves. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, w I want to debate it, and I want to. I want you guys to convince me that something did not happen in that picture. It can be a glitch in the camera software, dude. There's multiple pictures other than that, though, that all had weird things in them, and they're all. The, the, a lot of them were all different too, but there was one common theme where, in most of them, there's some sort of blue thing going on, and it's in different places, and it's not in the same place of the camera, and it's in different shapes, and um, there's a uh, there's one where like it looks like there's somebody's face as well. You would have noped as soon as anything happened. Yeah, that's... The orbs are demons. Well, that's what she was talking about. There's a lot of people that, uh... That died in that forest, man, that were, like, executed or killed against their will. One of, like, one group of them was in, a, in front of an audience, dude, and then they were, like... Their organs were dissected and stuff like that, like, while they were alive still. Um, some of them because they tried to hang them, but it didn't work. Uh, in one of the, the parts, like the actual thing that they were hanging from came apart and they were trying to fix it as it was actually like hanging them. And I think there's people that survived, so they tried to take their organs out. And then there's another guy that was hung in another part of the property for having a relationship with the um, the family's uh, like daughter or something like that, or the niece or whatever. Uh, he was like a, one of the the servants. And then there were, there's been people that have done like a lot of satanic rituals there too. Okay, the one other thing though. Okay, so this is Jill. The one other thing I want to mention too, just specifically because you were saying that it could be the camera software. So this forest, dude, you could go across the street and there's animals. In this particular area where all this stuff happened, there's not a single creature in general. There's nothing. Like there's no animals at all. There's no activity of life. Like, we got there when it was still a bit bright, too. There's nothing in the forest. Dude, it's dead silent, dude. There's nothing going on at all. And it gives you, like, a very interesting kind of sensation. It's just, it's hard to explain, but, like, why would there be no animals in an area where there's a bunch of animals normally? And, like, right beside it, same kind of forest, same same uh, essential piece of land with trees and, you know, forestry. There's animals there, but there's no animals in that one part. And it's a big, big section of it. Like not, I'm not. I'm not talking about like an area you could just walk quickly. Like a pretty significant portion of it where there's no animals at all. And they were saying like that's one of the things the animals can sense is the the weird shit going on, right? Place is set up to sell tours. Yeah, but when you say set up, Dank, what do you mean by that though? Maybe they put lights there and it's visible to the naked eye, but. Dude, they didn't. Like, I'm telling you, I, the whole entire time I was there, all I was doing, and also the guy that was taking the pictures with me too, we were just trying to disprove, we were trying to figure out if it was even real. Like, we were laughing at half of the stuff, dude. I was there in person, and I was trying to figure, we were looking around every single thing we were talking, trying to figure out exactly, like, is there is there anything that we can, we can verify here? And there's nothing, dude. It was just bare trees, bare, like, bushes and, and like, bare road. And, and nothing, and then just ruins. Uh, and the only thing that was set up on the tour, there was like um, a person talking, and then there was another person that had another lantern that was meeting us at the actual, uh, like the, the building that had burned down. 
And that's it. That's the only two things that were set up. That's an infrared sensor. Okay, but dude, there's other pictures I have where the blue light's occurring in places where there couldn't be a sensor of any any sort. That's what I'm saying. So it, it's not just in one picture and it's not just like, and it doesn't look the same in every picture either. There's, it's like tons of different examples of it that I have. That's just one picture. <laughs> that one was just the one with like something else going on with the, with the, so the anyways, I don't know. I'm a, I'll leave it, but I I tried my hardest to try to justify it, but I'm like, I can't because I was there and I saw it and I was looking, I was paying attention quite a bit to the surroundings and there was nothing that could, could explain it to me. So, yeah. Um, Pray Cygnus, what's up, dude? Yeah. Boy. You've had personal supernatural experiences to believe something exists. Well, like I said, I've seen a door literally like just open um, by itself in the house I'm in right now to a closet that's very shallow that has no actual like way to open. Like when you pull it, it's really hard to open by itself and the, the, the knob turned and it, I was with two other people and we all witnessed it at the same time. So that's the only thing I've seen that was weird. And I still have tried to justify it. I can't find any reasoning behind that either. I have no idea how that happened. And I'm very logical and I'm very, like, you have, you have to remember, I'm not the type of person to try to believe in this stuff because I want to. It's because, like, I, there's some irrefutable thing going on that's hard to justify otherwise. You surprised you. No matter. Why not to mention, on the actual tours, there's tons of people that have had actual shit happen to them. And, like, the, the whole entire group for some of them have, have seen things happen that literally, like, you can't explain. Like, people fucking appearing and vanishing in front of their face. So it's like... I totally believe it, but I also, I need to, like, in terms of, okay, am I going to see something myself? I don't know. Not trying to disqualify what you're saying, um, but a lot of stuff we see in photos that looks scary, some glitch, or I don't know. Yeah, but I was trying to say the same thing too, but like what you, but the infrared sensor thing you're talking about, like I don't, I've, I don't understand there being anything that exists on this planet that can make that happen in a photo that you wouldn't clearly be able to see on the tree. And like, it's in a spot where it's not even on a tree. It's like clearly in the foreground of the picture. Like it's closer to where the people are standing on the other side. It's like floating just dead in the air. It's not even connected to anything. <laughs> Like, again, I, I'm very logical and I'm trying to reason with every single last freaking square inch of my brain. And it just doesn't like that. That even if you discount the like the the shadow or the multiple shadows going on that are just clearly fucking engulfing the lady like that just was I could see with my own eyes and I could see when the guy took the picture was not there. Like It's just chromatic aberration. Yeah. I, well, I don't know, dude, honestly. Yeah, it's weird. The photo is creepy. It, it's fucking weird, dude. It's super weird. And if you like try to look at it from the standpoint that I'm in, where you have all the photos, I have the full album, and there's more things that happened. Like, dude, the guy took a picture of the sky, and there's shit in the in the camera that isn't even like, dude, it's not even part of the sky. It's, there's like a freaking like human colored face looking texture, where it looks like it could be like a warped human face. And all there would be on the camera would be blue, like like a like a dark blue, and then like dark green. That's it. And like there's colors existing in the picture that don't exist from nothing. There's no the, the only light source would be the moon. That's it, which is white light. So how else could that happen? And then in the same picture, there's the blue light again too, and that's in the sky. That's literally in the sky. So like then then if we're gonna go and use the infrared sensor, that's why I'm trying to say I don't think there's any infrared sensor because there's literally <laughs> there's blue shit in the sky, dude. <laughs> Is it only from your friend's camera? That's the only problem. That's the only thing that makes it hard for you guys to or for me to debate it because I didn't also take pictures with my camera too. But I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna do a bunch of them and I'm gonna keep taking pictures. You know, this will sound BS, but your brothers and, co and cousins were joking around in his basement, saying, I bet that door is going to open by itself. And then a glowing green humanoid came out. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> okay, I got I to gotta do this part seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, anyway, at least everybody can have a good laugh at what I'm saying, what everyone else says. Oh, I can't get over here. 
There we go. That part's always so freaking scary, dude. Um, okay, so a glowing... <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing at this, too. <laughs> That's so funny, I'm sorry. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> dude... <laughs> I'll be honest, man, if like for real, if fucking green, if a green guy came through the door right now, I would probably laugh a little bit. <laughs> Unless it was trying to kill me, but like I would probably laugh and I'd be laughing, dude. I'd only be laughing because it was green, too. I'd be like, why are you green? <laughs> oh my god, dude. Radioactive Mr. Burns. Okay, a, glow, glow, a glowing green humanoid came out and reached for your brother's neck. They all ran out. No one ever believed them. To this day, your brother's a grown-ass man, almost 30, and still says his I don't know why someone would talk about that since childhood, and you very much believe him. Dude, honestly, man, I'm on the fence about everything. Like, I'm in the dead center. So I'm not, it's not that I don't believe you, but I also don't think it's impossible either. Like, I'm just kind of in the but middle I'm for right everything physical. at this point. Oh, I oh my I god, that's so funny. <laughs> Radioactive Mr. Burns. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm crying right now, man, that's so funny. I'm just imagining the fucking, like, a glowing, like, radioactive man comes to the door out of nowhere. It just, dude, it, just <laughs> it just sounds like a meme or something like that, like, it sounds impossible. <laughs> It, like it, the thing is, if you said like a ghost came through the door or the door opened by itself and nothing was there but they could like hear voices, I would be more inclined to not laugh at that just because that sounds more like conventional. But the fact he's glowing though and that you can see, <laughs> dude, and he's like still trying to tell you that and he's thirty. That's funny, dude. That's super funny. Oh man. Okay, like has he told anybody that and they've laughed at him before? Like, have you witnessed him? Telling other people that? Oh man, that's so funny. <laughs> I'm I'm literally I'm literally gonna tell that story to other people and see what they say. <laughs> because I I do I straight up wish that was true. Like I want that to be hundred percent true, because that's hilarious. And also very very interesting too. You don't believe in anything supernatural? Honestly, if ghosts were around your room right now, for instance, you dare them to slam your head in your desk. Or <laughs> your keyboard. <laughs> oh, man. How do we not know, though, that you, like, the person typing is actually not even you, and, like, they have you held captive, and the ghosts are typing right now themselves? <laughs> your grandparents thought he was lying? Oh, man. <laughs> like, was he, was he, like, dead serious, too? Like, what, <laughs> like, can you... Can you look him in the eye and like there's just no bullshittery like he's he's just dead serious like you can see in his eyes that he saw something oh my god <laughs> imagine this happening and you start laughing at the guy and he turns it down on killing you the task on scary you just feel yeah dude imagine laughing at it and then it gets mad or something <laughs> And that's what I wonder too. Like I want you should you must be able to agitate like different types of negative spirits and energies and all that, right? Cause a lot of the stuff that um, we were told about that place I went to is like it's very vengeful and like cursed, right? Cause um apparently in even in like not not super recent time, but like years and years after that stuff happened where the people were killed, like there was someone that was taking pictures in the one building or whatever, the one place where it was still when it was still intact and everything. And it was like a lady and her daughter, and she's taking a picture of her daughter by the window that I was standing right beside, and she said that in the in the photo, there was a guy reaching for her, and then she like thought it was just a like a weird thing with the camera, like for example, what happened with the picture I showed you guys. So she kept taking pictures and in every picture his hand was getting closer to her. And then she pulled she like grabbed her and ran away and they never came back. So now, now I wish that like when I was there, I just took my camera out and started taking pictures of that window that I was beside, because that's where that happened. And my, so my mom, for example, she already went and did this exact same thing in the same place before. She was the one that told me about it and everything, and you know, encouraged me to go there, obviously, and went again. And she, she saw a dude in the second story. Like I'm not even talking about on a camera. Like she literally saw a guy, like a shining thing in the in the. Um, 
in the top window. Hello. And like when I say shining, hey, okay, so Hello. there's two things here that are crazy. So you could say, yeah, there's a light. They've done something to the place. Okay, so this is impossible because the building's not even, there's no floor. So the second story window is floating in the air and then the, there, there's only trees behind it. You can't even see the sky through the window. It's low enough where the tree line is still way above the building. And there's no one that can climb a tree and do something fucking perfectly, like, you know, perpendicular with the window. Oh, she yes, saw, like, so some sort of glowing person or some sort of, like, thing, like, shining, like, a guy in the window on the second story, but you can't stand there. So not a person or any object could could mimic that. It's, it would literally be impossible. And, like, because I went there and I've seen it the way it's set up and everything, I'm like, no, you would not. Even if an object was hanging from, like, the wall, you would see it. You would just go back through and see it. So, like... Uh, Odong, I don't want to share the name of the place just because, like, it's kind of close to where I live, and I don't want to, uh, you know, tell people, like, specific places I go to, because I'm going to be going back there quite a bit, and just for my own safety, because there's, like, people that are kind of weird sometimes that, like, show up to places and all that. I've gotten asked a lot of questions of places I've gone before, and um, there was people I was with that told people in chat where it was, and I was like, man, like, you got to be careful, and then people said they were going to start showing up, and I'm like... Well, that's okay if like you're invited though, but like just I don't want random people showing up at places. Show me. I mean, you can take my word for it. I know some people might not believe me or anything, but I didn't actually see the person in the window per this time or anything. I didn't see anything like that. Um, but she's also seen a lot of other stuff before too, and apparently her grandfather um, was like that. So yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say, man. I can't get over the gr glowing green man thing, though. That was so funny. <laughs> You've added your two cents in the Discord if you want to check it out. It's a bit too long for Twitch chat, you think? Okay. All right, sounds good, Turco. The th Please. Oh, thank you, kind. Did I forget? I in your seventh grade, we were learning about fight or flight in science Please. class. Brave Teacher showed a video with a jump scare in Michael Jackson's came. house that literally scared me so bad you didn't sleep for days. <laughs> MJ died the summer before your seventh grade year. Um, so you're freaked out about it and you still think about it to this day? Damn, dude. That's that's pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah, I remember when he passed away, I was at the mall and I remember it was on the TV there in the food court and I was pretty sad about it because I like his music. I'm a huge fan. Like, I think he's one of the best pop artists of all time. And everyone else was making jokes saying like, oh yeah, he like did things with kids or whatever. And I, was, I was like, man, dude, like he was like one, like regardless of how, however you want to look at anything to do with allegations and everything, dude, he was still the, one of the best musicians of all time. And like, he was like so original too, that like, you can't, you can't beat Michael Jackson. Like it's just, he's, he, he did it. He, he did, he, he accomplished some crazy stuff. But I can also let you not then why I am Carly. Goodbye. Um, here near where you live in some woods, a woman hang, hung herself, and people claim that some night she, you can hear someone crying in the area. There are a lot of people saying that. You won't go in there to prove anything. See, for me, like, I would. Like, I would be the person that would go in there and try to prove it. Like, that, that I just... I used to do a lot of crazy stuff, though, dude. To be honest, I would go to an abandoned, burned-down house in the middle of a forest, in the middle of the dark, walk out in the dark as well, pitch black with friends, multiple times we went there we would go to abandoned train stations we would go like in like construction like under like p2 undergrounds of construction places before they were done being built and like lock ourselves in rooms and shit like that we'd, we'd go into the regular forest at night um pitch black with no flashlights and just like scream at each other and push each other on the ground and stuff like that went into a cave before i have pictures of that too where there was bats and there was no phone service and it was like shoulder to shoulder spelunking inside a crevice in the ground uh, we did, uh, oh, there's, sorry, my one buddy was crazy enough where he left his phone, or I think he dropped his wallet in there or whatever, and he went, he went and drove back to the frickin' mountain in the middle of the night by himself and went in there with, with nobody, like, no one knew he went in there and he went back to go get his wallet, and I was like, dude, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. So, you're crazy? I'm, I'm, dude, I'm very tempted to do crazy things all the time. It's, I've become much more tame, but, like, if I have the opportunity to go and do something wild, I'll... Like I said, I like to go on hikes where like you could like there's some risk, like you could like hurt yourself. There was one place I used to go to where you had to shimmy across a ledge and if you fell, you probably could break your neck or something like that. <laughs> so
So like I like the idea of there being a little bit of danger or excitement. It's very, very tempting. Obviously, like I I'm probably a little bit more reasonable than some people. Um, that are like wild, but I'm also getting older, so I'm like, okay, I can't like do too many insane things, but like I'll do something where I know for sure I could easily hurt myself. Like and it's like, okay, it's more of an incentive to do it properly then. If, if you told me a crazy, unbelievable thing that happened, would I listen? Yeah, sure. Go for it, Turco. Jump around in a foam pit at TwitchCon if you're so brave. <laughs> a foam pit at TwitchCon. <laughs> Is there actually foam pits there, Noja? Have you been there before? Uh, you and a good friend went to some ruins where the area is said to be haunted or something, and... In one of the buildings, there were literally lit, lit skull candles. That's wild, dude. That reminds me of uh, the story the lady was telling me about the people that go and, like, they try to, like, conjure demons in this place I went to, and they were, like, Satanists and stuff. And uh, one of the stories was that a guy that was a security guard way back um, on the, like, in the area or whatever, he was just doing rounds, checking everything, and he saw a group of dudes in hoods that uh, were around a fire and one of the guys grabbed fire out of, like he grabbed at, like embers out of the fire and held them in his hand and tried to hand them to him. And his eyes were glowing red, that's what he, that's what he said, apparently. And then um, he never saw them again. Oh, actually there was, sorry, he, he didn't see them again for a long time, but then another person apparently saw, like there was a bunch of like luxury cars parked in the parking lot over where like the visitors area would be. And so he's like, there's nobody here today. Like, there shouldn't be anyone visiting. Like, we're not doing anything here. And he went back to the uh, where the fire was that the other guy saw, like, a while back, before. And again, he saw those, he saw the people doing, like, some sort of crazy, like, sacrifice or whatever. And I was like, that's pretty scary. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I don't know. A streamer broke his back in two parts jumping on one of those? What? Are you serious? Uh, when you were a kid, you went to go play with a ball and there was a moment where no one could see. Your father was coming, but he came before he could see what happened. You kicked the ball randomly into the air and you swear that it flew up into the sky. It disappeared into the clouds and eventually came down. What? Wait a second. Wait a second. You kick the ball and randomly into the air and you swear that it flew up into the sky, it disappeared into the clouds and eventually it came back down. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, like you're not, you're, 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 you swear 100% you're not screwing with me right now. 100%. Like you're dead serious. Cause like I've known you for a long time and I trust you quite a bit. So like the thing is, if you say that, I'm gonna believe that that happened to you. I'm definitely not one of those people that are so crazy that if like someone said like, and I'm not saying that like maybe what you you saw was different than how it happened, or maybe you thought you saw it and like you're convinced, or there was some like obstacle illusion you experienced. Maybe whatever the reason is, but I I believe you though. If that's like how you remember it. That's damn, dude. <laughs> Yo, it probably hit a spirit spring, and like the ball was actually like, there's like a really miniature horse that the ball was riding on, and it used it, the, the torrent used like the spirit spring to jump really high in there, and then it came back. Like the guy, it didn't make it over the cliff or whatever. <laughs> IRL spirit spring, yeah. Or as Vsweat calls it, a wind tunnel. Um. You find it funny how people will believe in aliens, but nothing else? Well, believing in aliens, honestly, is, like, even more crazy, I feel, than believing in... Like, okay, like, and believing in, pe like, intelligent life forms beyond us, like, that are organically here right now, in the, in the th third dimension, is more far-fetched than the stuff I've been talking about, I think. In, in my opinion. In, like, th that's just me. That's how I look at it. I think that's still, like, a little more out there than, like, what we've been talking about already. Only because like like there's tons of people that have seen this shit already that and how that happened. But also again, I took a picture. But I I believe in that too though. I do believe in that. Hundred percent, I believe in the intelligent species that are, you know, beyond humans, for sure. 
because there's not really a downside in, in like if it's wrong if you're wrong about that like there's not a huge downside in that it doesn't matter but i think that there's like you know it's plausible enough Well, Ange, not even organisms, because because like obviously there could be a lot of different life forms, but some people don't believe there's like more intelligent ones than humans, right? So I don't. I guess there's different levels to it, right? I've been. I knew you. I hereby take my hand. Give me. Your I will. By the way, how have you been, dude? I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> you missed a funny story from uh, Fapplegar. <laughs> he said his brother opened a door. Or like he, he like said he was with, I, I think he said he was with his friends or something like that and he was in the basement. And he said, I bet you that door won't open. And some guy came through that was glowing and green <laughs> and reached for his brother's neck. <laughs> your, your brother Ben Shrek. <laughs> I am Tani. Rise, a warrior. Perhaps. Will you joy X rise with us? Interesting. I don't know why that's the funniest thing I've heard on stream before, dude. That's like there's not like the only other time I've laughed this hard on stream. Well, there's two things like floppy souls, and then uh, there was a thing from Outlast where there's these people that were like cave monkeys and they were chasing me, and they ran so quickly that like there was no way in hell you could actually get away from them. Like they were just way too fast, and I thought that they were like the speed of the character, so I turned around and they were like in my face within like two seconds, and that that killed me, dude. That was really funny. Oh. <sighs> Whereas Bronze, he would love this. Oh, I'm sure he would love this, yeah. I think he's probably sleeping or something. Oh, this has been really funny. <laughs> but dude, like, Fapplegar, like, I want to believe that, though. Like, not believing that to me would be a shame, because... Or it not happening would be a shame. Because who doesn't want to see a glowing green guy? Like, I think that's really cool. I don't know. I'd love to see just wild things that are just really obscure happen, but... Um... Just because, like, hey, you know, it'd be a change. It would be a change of pace. It'd be something different. You'd be like, oh, you don't see that every day. Go on, green guy. You know, <laughs> look at that, honey. There's Shrek. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Oh my, god. oh my god, that was close. Okay, I gotta be careful. We gotta get a little less silly now, so we can tune this down or turn this down. Or sorry, tone tone this down. Can't speak. You're laughing out loud again. The cave monkeys was so funny. Like, if, okay, I'm sure everyone here has heard of Outlast before. If you haven't played it, at least check out the part that... I don't even know what you'd search online to find it, but there's a part where, like, it's raining blood and you're, like, getting off of, like, this um, this mining cart or some sort of, like, thing suspended, Very like well. a cable car, I think. My... And then you get on a platform and, dude, the monkeys are running so fast that there's no game I've ever witnessed where they make a character run, like, ten times faster than the character. And you, you can't hesitate, you can't turn back. It's so scary, dude. You have to like get to a checkpoint and then I think they look for you or something. Wasn't that Outlast 2? It was in the it was in the first one, I'm pretty sure. Was it Outlast 2? I don't think it was Outlast 2, dude. I'm pretty sure the blood oh wait. Oh Is it Outlast 2? Okay, maybe it was. Maybe it was. Might be wrong. The section with the blood rain, yeah. Was the blood rain that last two? Damn, okay. If anything tagged this horror, you automatically avoid it. This isn't even scary rolling, this is just funny, dude. It's just really funny. Oh my god, that is so funny. That was like one of the most memorable things that have ever happened to me in a game in my life. Like, I'll, I'll remember that when I'm 80 years old, if I make it there. <laughs> Time to begin Outlast 2 speedrunner. I I did I did actually do a speedrun of it before, but I didn't do it on stream. I practiced it shortly after the game came out, and then I realized it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be to speedrun. Did that with a couple things. Did that with Shadow of the Colossus as well. Man, time flies when you're talking about glowing green guys and ghost pictures. Whew. Okay. Why why do I have less flasks? Oh, I didn't do the crimson tier yet. 
Maybe it, or sacred tier. Did I not grab it? Hmm. Gonna go back and just double check. Ethan's hand stuff in Resident Evil Village was one of the funniest things you've ever seen. Oh, his hand was pretty crazy too, yeah. I do remember that. I thought I had used the sacred deer. How come you can talk to her? Spoken words if you would. Where, what? Of course, tell me if. What is that? Very well, my lord. With thine, ye will wait well. How? What? Was that a glitch? I already went to round table and she said it gave me a yes or no. Oh, she, she just gives you lore? It is intended? Okay, never mind. Freaking out a little bit. Um, I got the stuff from Calais. We're good. Okay, I'm freaking out a bit. That was weird. I thought that it was saying, do you want to go to Volcano Manor again? Or, I'm um, sorry, the round table. Speaking of uh, extraterrestrials, jeez. <laughs> Um, you hate to ask, what was the one hit on the one hit run? Oh, and Nick, it was uh, in that clip right there. It's the Stormvale Castle Gate. Or um, when you go through like one of the main gates up the stairs. Millennia Zero Hit might be harder than the full game Zero Hit. I wonder. You could be very correct there. Because I, I don't even think getting Millennia Zero Hit one time would be as bad as the whole notion of getting it consistently. Like, I think getting it consistent will take so much longer than mostly everything in the game. But I guess we'll see. We'll have a conversation about that when we get there, and maybe I'm wrong. This sounds BS, but your older brother's cousin were joking around in the basement about that door was going to open by itself. Yeah, that's what, that's what he said, yeah. <laughs> but if you believe that ball story, you got to believe this one too. Exactly. If you believe the ball happened, then the glowing green guy is 100% real. And my picture is real. And Shrek is real as well. <laughs> yeah, Fapagar, no, dude, it definitely, it seems funny now, but I bet you if you were like just hanging out with your friend or something like that when you were a kid, especially like if I was younger and that happened, I would actually be scared. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it's funny. But if it happened now, I think I'd laugh just because I think of some crazy things. So I just... My mind would immediately jump to what you said, <laughs> or what we've been talking about lately. <laughs> then I'd probably immediately try to ask it a question. I'd be like, yo, what's going on? Like, why are you here? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and then the question would be, do you run away? Or like, do you just wait and see what happens? Like, maybe he is radioactive and he touches you and you evaporate or something. Like, maybe you literally turn into like, nothing. <laughs> If we're, if we're taking this with a grain of salt, like, we have to think, like, what are the powers that this thing has? Or maybe it's not even, like, dangerous. Who knows? <laughs> There's too, too many things to consider before you could even react, basically. I think you would just have to keep, if you were going to even talk to it, you'd have to keep backing up at the same time, just in case. So keep in a constant distance.
can make the next cut character glowing green. Yes, we can. <laughs> After that story, dude, I actually have to. I have to say that. Yeah, like let's be friends, dude. It reminds me of um, wasn't there a Simpsons episode where there was an alien or like a glowing green dude that tried to actually be friends with one of them or something like that, or he was like, I'm just, I'm harmless, and they're like, No, it's scary. Kill it. He's like, No. <laughs> Uh, Sarah, thank you for the good luck. What's up, by the way? And, oh yeah, no, it was it was Mr. Burns. That's true. That was that was the Mr. Burns episode. You're right. My bad. There's the redirected Burns. Yeah. <laughs> There's an SPC monster that. Sorry, SCP monster. Breaks your neck in an instant if you break eye contact. Or really. Is that like a legend or a myth or something like that? Can we upload this part to YouTube even if it isn't the run? Just to add something about join the stream for more fun. It would be a pretty dude on. <laughs> yeah, it would be a really funny short video for YouTube, <laughs> or even Instagram, dude. I I could hundred percent put it on Instagram. At the very least, so yes, if someone wants to clip like when I when Fapplegar first told me about the glowing green guy. That would be really funny. I would love that. Dude, the sound cue for the arrows goes so far. I went into the freaking lift, dude. Oh my god. You'd love to see it on IG. That'd be a really good one. <laughs> Opinion on lemon cookies. A Lawson. Um... Uh, I'm trying to think of how many times I've even had lemon cookies. So the last time I had lemon cookies, they were made with um, sugar erythritol, like uh, sugar alcohol essentially. And it added a really interesting cooling effect to the cookies. And they were really good. And that's the last thing I can remember of having them. I don't even know if I've had a lemon cookie before that. I've had a lemon poppy seed muffin, I think, or something like that. And that's the only other lemon thing I can think of. And then I've had like lemon squares before. Yeah, the the, the sugar-free lemon cookie was really good. I, I'm a huge fan of lemon flavor. Uh, Nicholas is going pretty good. How are you, man? Off the armor here again. Lemon poppy seed muffins with butter is amazing. That lemon cookie sounds good, though, too. Yeah, I can get the recipe. You guys want to make it. Bits of lemon peels and cakes. Lemon zest is actually really underrated. You, you could put on a lot of stuff. And you can call yourself a fancy chef. Be like, I'm just zest in fruits. It's like, what's that? It's some orange peel. It's like, what's that? It's a banana peel. It's like, what's that? It's a kiwi peel. Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> like, why'd you put the fuzz of a kiwi inside the yogurt, dude? <laughs> I want brown hairs in my yogurt. <laughs> oh, man. The zest, yeah. Oh, boy. I swear to God, I'm gonna like wake up in the middle of my sleep tonight, just laughing so hard for like I'm gonna pee my pants from the Green Guy story. I'm gonna have a dream of going going to the washroom or something like that in my actual house. There's gonna be a Green Guy in the shower. <laughs> He's gonna be like, "Help me!" <laughs> well, that's dude. It's like I, I'm like trapped in like how funny that is. And more importantly, the fact that, like, he still tells the story as if it happened. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm gonna have a lucid dream of a neck reach, the neck reach. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll make a promise. If I ever have the funds to do it, I'll make a short animation, if anything. Maybe a full Hollywood production, but a short animation of the neck reacher. And it's, it's gonna be just, like... 
I bet you that door won't open, buddy. And then the guy's gonna be like, I bet you it will open. And then like, it's gonna be like, oh no, it's the neck creature. Ah! And then like the guy's just gonna be like, come here. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna basically be like the the creature from the Black Lagoon, but glowing. And he's gonna be like, ah! like some amphibian man. And he's gonna be like transparent and like glowing at the same time. And he'll, he'll be talking like Darth Vader or something like that. Like, I've come to bring you back to the mothership or something. <laughs> Feels green guy. Dude, I, I need to make a gl glowing green man emote. It's the only thing we can do to keep it alive, man. Real talk, though, personally, you believe that we have a so-called filter in our brains to block out other dimensional beings that we so we won't go insane. Dude, it sounds kind of reasonable. Okay, so I 100% agree with that, but like maybe I think of it in a different way. So maybe not under other dimensional beings, but I think that there's a lot of things happening in the space around us that we navigate that we don't need to actually see to navigate. But for example, static electricity, like we can't see static electricity happening. Like we can't see energy fields and shit like that. Um, but there's people that claim that they've gotten into states of mind where they can see energy fields. I was listening to a video recently where a guy was like, not even talking about that at all, but he just included it in the video because he's like, dude, I was in like a crazy state of mind. And then I shit you not, I could see static electricity all over the freaking room. And I was like, that's weird. And but like he like the way he said it and everything and the fact he was explaining it in a pretty dead serious way. I was like, maybe he did see static electricity. And I was like, if you could see that, then what else could you see? And also just think of the fact that your your eyes, they filter a lot of things. And a lot of the the things you use, like the the mechanisms of the body, like the ears, the eyes, um, you know, all that, it has a range for a reason. Because if we had too much sensory overload, we would go crazy. The brain would not be able to handle processing it. So it's almost like an efficiency thing too. Now, there can be arguable spectrums and limitations to each organ, such as that. But I still do believe that, like, consciously, if there's less limitation to that than the filtration, then of course you probably could perceive something Greg. beyond that. Love the stream. Keep it up. So I totally, I totally, like, 100% agree with what you're saying there. Just maybe in a different a way of thinking of it. Neck reach. <laughs> <laughs> that creature, thank you for the five dollars, dude. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Brave. That creature donated to the stream. That's hilarious. That is really funny. Like, dude, the thing is, if this is not the run, I will be sad tonight because, th like, this is such an organic story that happened, and we need to continue the need to pass the 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 run so we can have this like in history. <laughs> And it could be written in a magazine. It's like, got the run, but he was talking about some glowing green guy called the Neck Reacher. It's like, we don't know what that is, but. More news later. Like, okay, the reason that I'd want it on YouTube too, I just want to, I want to see what people on YouTube that don't watch the stream say in the comments. Like if they believe it or they're just like, that's stupid. Because <laughs> there's always going to be someone that's probably like, that's dumb. But I want to see if anyone thinks it's it's funny, or at least like maybe it makes them think a bit. <laughs> Got to have them great grab you and vaporize you. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone will ridicule you. Oh yeah, like also there's the um, the ball story too. Yeah, there's both of them. I bet you someone's gonna say, oh, he just wanted attention because there was already a cool story, so he decided to hijack it or something like that. It's like anyone that shared a story after the first one, like, or like, this is gonna be like a standard YouTube comment. First story was funny, but everyone after that was fake because they wanted attention. Fake news, yeah. Sure what he did there. 
He did like a combo and then another combo. It's a weird combination there. Two combos back to back. trouble. Oh, he did. He called the skulls early, but we're good. And the only reason I'm good is because I got a stagger on him at that exact time. That was really lucky. Damn. Didn't plan on that. Does an L2 at the beginning of the fight guarantee he doesn't do the wave attack? Uh, the wave attack. Well, okay, so an L2 at the beginning of the fight, no matter what, will stagger him. Um, it might not guarantee that he doesn't do an attack again, but... The reason... Oh, you're, you're talking about at the beginning of phase one, so... That particular attack, you have to... You have to be close to him, and he doesn't do it. So, in the beginning, I go really close to him, and I do the attack, and then I'm already so close after that that I can follow up with another R2, and then he won't do that attack right after. So, following that, the only way he can do the wave attack is if you back up because of the poison. Reason to wear armor. Um, so, I would be the same equip load even if I didn't have the armor. Oh, I am the king refused. It would just help me keep practicing if I got hit and survive, for example, but... Yeah, it makes no difference. I can't I can't do the light roll. Even if I have the armor off, because the weapon's so heavy. That was scary. It was a pretty scary fight. I was confused. I wasn't sure what he was doing. Oh, dude, I don't have enough of the runes, do I? Uh-oh. I have to go kill Galika. Get a load of SJWs, oh man. They, they would be complaining because the color of person that I chose was green. They're like, why couldn't he be purple? Why does he have to be green? Why, or they, they'd be like, it would be like Alien Lives Matter or something like that. They'd be like, you, you can't just say he's green because everybody thinks it's funny to make fun of green people until they actually visit Earth and they're aliens. Like, it'd be some sort of like sensitivity to the fact that like, like, oh, stereotypical person using green people as like a extraterrestrial. Little do you know, they probably look like us. Genuinely laugh more from the stream than you have in two months, dude. I've laughed so hard my stomach hurts. Like, I, I, yeah. Love you guys too, Rolling. Like, it's, I'm glad you guys are having a good time. I know some people would just think it's stupid. Like, they would just wouldn't even laugh at that, but that's like my kind of humor to be honest and it's not even humor it's like apparently a real story <laughs> that's why it's even funnier like <laughs> like if someone just tried to explain that in real life that i know i'm just imagining someone saying it like dead serious and i can see in their eyes like there's no reason for them to pretend they're just like i swear <laughs> and, and they're like you don't have to believe me you're not going to but it happened though like and if like a close friend of mine told me that I don't know, like, there's just something about, like, when you have, when you're good enough friends with people, you trust them, like, you just kind of want to believe them, so it's just like, shit. <laughs> Maybe he was right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Rolling, thank you for gifting Fapplegar a sub, I appreciate it, dude. <laughs> oh, Fapplegar, after this, dude, if you talk to your brother, uh, in recent time, just tell him you, tell him you told me the story, and <laughs> you can say that I laughed, but just tell him that, like, I want to believe that it was real. <laughs> And that, like, I'm not going to discount it at all. I, I want to believe 100% that it's real. I just I think it is really funny, though. You missed a Mike Tyson impression? Oh, man. Uh, I did a couple of them when we were doing our uh, marathon stream. Which, there, there is going to be quite a few of them in the video for it. So, 
Um, I, hi I hired a new editor. He's editing down the video. He actually finished it. I think it's going to be uploaded tomorrow. Yeah, and I can check it off and see if I like it or whatever. And then it'll be finalized and ready to go sometime this week. Um, and then the full version of the 11 hour subathon will be on the second channel. It'll be the first video on the second channel. And I will have the link to that channel um, when it is live on there. So you guys can watch it. Storm Bale. Morgan Free needs to be the narrator. The neck reach. <laughs> he was in the basement with his brother. Little did he know that that neck reacher was coming through the door. Come over here, would you? He tempted him by saying the door you're, you're couldn't open, but then a glowing green man came through the door and killed Andy Dufresne. The meat's tightly the guards you breached. Oh boy. Yeah, you're Jai you slip when you approach it on. You have a 60 hour work week ahead, so you have something to keep you going. There you go. Yeah. And then the, the, the thing is, the, the edit of it, the quick version will be pretty funny. The gates. Open the There's a gates. lot of memes and edits that are uh, like original in there. And I'll, I've watched some of it already, and it was making me laugh. And it's really hard for me to laugh at something that I did myself, so. Um, the spin that Hunter put on it was really good. And if you guys like it enough, I want everyone to just comment, uh, like, just what they think about the editing style, if they like it or if they want to see something different again. If you like it, if there's enough good feedback, I'll keep doing more videos like that. And then we'll do the same thing. So if it's a longer one that gets cut up, then we will put it on the other channel. Anything that's a run like this will still be a full video on the main channel. It won't, won't be cut down at all but just for like really, really long runs in general. I think it could help a lot. Get busy shining green or get busy dying. This summer, a film that kept you captivated the whole time. Was he a green alien or was he a human in the first place? Andy Dufresne decides to see if the glowing green man will reach for his neck and grab him. Oh boy. What's the song called? This one? Um, Tenacious Dream by Colors of Illusion. The arrow, you saw that? That's amazing. We kind of we kind of got away from it still, but that's close. Very close. I'm sort of worried about that. Also worried about this part too. Yeah, that air attack. Got to go on an angle for that because he he tries to do it right away. You make uh, dubstep and stuff of that sort. Would love to use your voice in a tune. Uh, Gong Show, you, you, you can, you can, uh, like, if you want to sample something for the stream, I give you permission to do that. But if you want me to, like, record something for you, are you, like, selling the music? Is it going to be, like, online posted somewhere? We can, like, like, discuss something, come to an agreement, maybe, if you want. Because I've done alerts for people before. They've, they've, um, like, commissioned alerts for me, essentially. but I haven't done a lot of those. Okay, let's go. Godric. No shenanigans. And then after that, we get to Fire Giant. We have to. Then we're back to where we were before. Pantone color of the year. <laughs> 2022 Neck Reacher Green. <laughs> This is so funny. I actually love it, dude.
Just gonna do that fight again. That was a little sketchy. Not feeling that one too much. Your heart stopped four times. <laughs> Mine did too. <clears throat> yeah, he wasn't staggering at all. Um, I didn't hit him quick enough. You have to do three pretty close together. Almost got sent to the center. <laughs> There's one. I'll be honest, dude, Godric is still a scary guy. Like, he probably is one of the scariest things in the game. There's not much else that freaks me out like Godric does. He's like, ha 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 ha, I am the Lord. Ugh. Of course, he's scary. He's got like freaking arms on arms. Imagine him in the gym, dude. He would take up every machine at the same time. He'd be curling the entire dumbbell rack at the same time. All those grafted guys are pretty scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, even, yeah, Scion is really freaky, too. So I wonder in, in, if they make DLC, if there's going to be other grafted characters. That'd be such a hard boss. Like, for me, on my first playthrough, because I was kind of prepared for him, he was, like, medium difficulty, but I think if you went there right away, if you killed Margit and then made it through the castle, you did that right off the bat, didn't go anywhere else, he would be pretty challenging. I think it depends on how much health you have for it. It's kind of like Amelia. Amelia can be pretty challenging if you don't have a lot of health and damage. You had a customer come to your shop, but yes, the song would end up on Spotify and maybe other services. Should you message me on Discord or here, Gong Show? Um, if you can message me um, on my... Do, wait, do you have me on Discord? You might have to send me a friend request on Discord. Okay, then yeah, definitely message me on Discord then. Song name, this is uh, Snow Day by Dylan Sitz. Maybe you don't. Okay, you can always uh, message me on Twitter if you have one too. Like I have a uh, message request open on there. And if your name is different, just um, remind me that it's about the like voice line, I guess you could say. In which console um, Elden Ring runs better? Uh, I actually have no idea. I'm pretty sure on like the current generation of console. So. For me, on PS5, this game runs better than on PC. Because my PC is not amazing. So the PC, PS5 version runs better than PC for me. I think that at the very best, if you have an amazing PC, this game should run the same as PS5 and Xbox. They should all be the exact, the exact same. Um, just the fact that the settings can be a bit higher with graphics on PC. And then on... Is this, is this game even on PS4? I think it is, right? I think on PS4, this game runs kind of rough overall. So um, the best console would be like the newest one, either PS5 or Xbox. Give it on PS4, Sarah. Was good for you. Was it actually not too bad? Does it on PS4 Pro, does it run 60 FPS? That's pretty impressive, dude, because, like, my computer struggles with this a little bit. Like, it's it's going okay now. Like, you can see on the stream it's okay, but it's not perfect, though. Could be better. Pretty good with standard PS4? Dude, that's amazing. Because remember Bloodborne was kind of iffy? We 
need a mod that replaces Millennia with Neck Reacher. <laughs> Dude, if, okay, if, if I can pull some strings... Well, okay, it probably won't happen, but I'm gonna ask CJ, uh, the couch jockey, if he can make Neck Reacher a boss in the Convergence mod. I'll just be like, yo, what do you think about a glowing green guy that opens a door and then the boss fight starts? <laughs> and he's gonna probably be like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> and his only attack will be that he reaches for you, and if he grabs you, then he kills you. <laughs> That'd be amazing, dude. I can ask him and see what he would, like, maybe they would do it for fun. I don't know. Opens the door and then the boss fight starts. <laughs> Yo. I'm gonna Photoshop a freaking a, a, like a meme of the neck creature when I when I have some time, dude. And like no one will know what it is other than just us right now. Anyone that was here today, just paying attention. Um, how's paintball, Chromie? Dude, it was amazing. It was the best paintball I've ever played, man. It was with all, it was with all, all uh, friends of mine and like their extended friends and just people we knew. Uh, we got a pri private access to a field that was closed because um, one of my friends, like his buddies, own a uh, a business that they had closed today, but they let us come by and play for play just um, like a private match or a bunch of private matches. And dude, they own like a crazy amount of farmland, so there was like a good probably seven arenas or something like that. Um, they had a speedball field with air bunkers. They had a bunch of tactical layouts. They had one with a bus and like shipping crates and different type. They had one with like trucks and barrels and stuff like that. Um, and I have a video on Instagram if you want to see it. I had a uh, match where that was one of the first ones I played with. Um, it was three on three and then my team won and I, I played Snake and uh, finished off the match. It was pretty good. And then, um, there's some other clips too. I have a, I have one that my buddy sent me of my gun on, on 15 balls per second or something like that. Like I had, I had it on ramping and I don't play on ramping. I play on semi-auto all the time. And it was the first time I used the ramping on it. It just sounds menacing, dude. It's so fast. And I think you can, you can override the, the motherboard on it or whatever. And you can literally make it 20 balls per second. <laughs> so I'm going to try that at some point. <laughs> But it was, dude, it was so fun, and uh, they invited us back next Sunday, so we might, like, my, the whole group of people I go with, we might go and make a trip out to, like, the farmland again and, and do it there. So, like, I'm super happy that we have a, a place to go to that's outdoors before it gets cold. That's really fun, because I, I don't like playing inside as much. I like the, uh, the airfield or the tactical outside stuff. My utmost thanks for bringing me to the base here. And thus, I shall do farewell. I shall leave. I wish you. Yeah, lots of good matches. I got quite a few kills, and um, like we, the teams were really good because the people that were were there, they've all played pretty seriously. My one buddy, he's actually trying out for a league that's uh, like, like an actual tournament system or whatever, like one of the leagues for Ontario or whatever, my province. And then some of the other people there have played before, um, on teams. And a lot of the other ones, they're just very serious. They go all the time to different places, so... Uh, it makes a big difference when you can choose who's there and who's not. Like, you don't have just random showing up and everything. It's just, like, a lot of, like, people that are very serious. And, um, especially when it's not too crowded, too. Because there, there was one day I went to the place that was near me. Um, not super long ago. And there was a, there was a huge party of people that were renting. And the matches were so big that it was like maybe 11 or like 12 on 12 or something like that, or even more than that. And there's not a lot of room in the place I usually go to. So my own team was shooting me in the back of the head when I was trying to breach a door. And I was just like, dude, like, stop shooting me in the back of the head. I'm on your team. I had to like yell like a bunch of times because they didn't, they were new. Like, so, and then I walked off. I did a walk off. And the guy shooting me in the rib cage, I'm like, dude, I'm out. I have my hand up. Like, I'm literally, I even like yelled before I went through the doorway. Like, I'm out. I'm coming out. I'm walking. And then the guy just keeps shooting me. And I'm like, what, dude, like, I'm off. <laughs> like, stop doing that. So that's really frustrating because, like, people that have never gone before, they don't, their reaction to things happening is purely just shoot everything that moves, right? It's not like, oh, I'm going to pay attention to see, like, is this guy on my team or 
Is he not? Did he come from a different location? Like, is he walking off? Is his hand on his head? Or is he, you know, his gun's in the air? So it's very, it's very difficult to play with like people that are renting when you're really, really, you've been doing it for years. Um, it's okay if it's like small teams. That's different. Like, that's not a big deal. But when it's crowded in a small, small space, it's kind of crazy. What marker? I have a Planet Eclipse Etha, and then I got the uh, the Die Rotor feeder. It's like an IG something or whatever. I forget. They call they have. They, it used to be like what the Die Rotor was before, but it's like the new version. And then I use a like a Grills mask, and um, I have a carbon fiber full size like. I think it's like a 40, it's not, it's not a stubby, but just like a regular size carbon fiber tank. I'm thinking of getting a Lux X or a Lux Ice though, because my buddy, he, he like buys and sells guns all the time. He's literally like a freaking salesman of paintball gear. So I might buy his Lux off of him. Um, or like, I don't know, maybe trade for something at some point because I, re I really like it. He, I've shot his, um, his uh, Lux X before and it's, dude, it's amazing. Looking to get a standing desk. Do you like yours? I love it, dude. It's amazing. It's really convenient too because sometimes you don't want to sit down. Like if, if you're in the habit of obviously getting used to standing up, that's one thing. But once you do it enough, sometimes you just want to walk up to it and then just stand there and then walk away if you're doing something quick. So I've had calls with people before on Discord where I just talk for like 20, 30 minutes. When I was making some meal plans for people and fitness plans, we would just have a meeting. I'd be standing up, I'd be typing some notes and then I'd come back and I'd actually just make the document before we start a stream or something like that, or when I have some other free time, and it's really nice for that. Um, I haven't edited yet or done anything that's like more intense. Like recording a video standing might be interesting. I, I gotta try doing that soon, but um, for streaming specifically, you just gotta make sure you alternate. So it depends on what you wanna do. The only thing I'd recommend if you're gonna try to stand, sit down every couple hours at the very most. Uh, maybe every hour if you can, but like alternate back and forth. Um, you'd love to get into paintball, but you already have a way too expensive of a hobby, Crow. What is your your expensive hobby? Can you share what model you have? You're looking something you're looking into. Thanks for your input, Link. Um, dude, I wish I knew the name of this standing desk. I have the box in the living room. I keep forgetting to uh, check what it is can d get decent markers on a budget. Yeah, the one that I have, I overpaid for it a little bit, but well, actually, no, no, I think I paid no, I paid what they normally ask for. I didn't get a deal on it, basically, so I could have got it for cheaper. Um, but my friend can get things for really good prices. Like on eBay, he got um a like a one of the die markers. It was one of the like the newer ones that are mid range, like equivalent of what I have. And he got it for pretty cheap. And uh, the thing is, the guy never used it. They owned it, it was brand new. But he got it for a use price. The marker is worth like 900 to to $1,000 normally. Got it for like 500 or something like that. So he gets amazing deals and then he just... Sometimes he doesn't like the paint job, we'll just get it anodized or like get new paint on it. And then he'll like just sell them to other people that need them. Sometimes he can afford like to sell them for, you know, really cheap to other people too. So if he can get me a reasonably priced Lux X, then I will, I'll grab one off him. You do competition shooting, like you USPSA. Oh, okay, I see. Is that kind of like skeet shooting or is it just like targets? Or is that, is that, that's like a sniping, kind of like bolt action rifles? I'm trying to think, like not like the Olympic shooting, right? I've always wanted to try that, dude. I want to. I really want to try a sniper rifle. Kind of sounds funny, but I would love to use some like like just any any bolt action rifle to just snipe some targets would be cool. Expensive hobbies getting injured, Turco. How do you get injured so much? Um, yeah, Link. If you if you give me a whisper message, just ask me what is the name of your standing desk right now. Sometime in the next couple days, I can give you the name once I check it, because it'll be a reminder. United States Pistol Shooting Association. 
You're an MT MTG and video game guy, so you don't have the money for anything else. Fair enough. MTG is pretty expensive. Like for the paintball stuff, though, I have a really, really like a lucky situation because I already have owned some of the stuff for a long time. I don't actually hit like I don't overpay for anything. Like I get used things when I need like my pod pack I got for the match that we did today. Um, I my old one I had to throw out because it was in the, it was in a flood and it got all gross and everything. And same thing with my old jersey and my slide pants. And I also had cleats as well, like soccer cleats that I used to use that were ruined. So I threw out all that stuff. Got a slide, uh, or sorry, a, a pod pack with pods for like super, super cheap from some dude that was getting rid of his. Um, and it's an ejector pack too, so it's really good. And then like everything else is pretty budget. I don't wear a jersey. I just wear regular clothes. I don't wear slide pants at all. And I'm fine. And then... Um, Again, like my gun's like more mid mid to upper mid range, so it's not like tournament crazy level, but you can use it in tournaments if you want. The feeder's good. I got I got it for literally I think like 30% of what it actually costs because my buddy already had used it for a while and it's basically brand new still, so he sold me it for cheap. I think the most expensive thing was the tank probably in relation to how much the stuff usually costs. I think I overpaid for that, like legitimately, and then the paint itself now, like a case, can go from 100 to 120 bucks, but I get it for $40 a case. Um, because I have a friend that knows someone that does it for cheaper, and um, we're allowed to shoot uh, one star, which is like the lowest grade at the normal place I go to. The one I went to today is two star, which is 50 bucks a case, but um, we're gonna try to convince them at some point to let us shoot the one star, because we realized today that people were shooting one star there before, it was yellow fill because there's a bunch of yellow stains everywhere so we're like why not just use the yellow fill one star instead because it's way cheaper robin knows this the run it has to be the run it doesn't have a we don't have a choice absolutely has to be the run Yeah, I mean, like, it used to be a lot more expensive, because when I used to go, cases were 60 to $70. Um, so now I can get them for way cheaper, and I shoot less paint. I don't even play as often, and I shoot way less per, per game overall. This is the first time I wore the pod pack in, like, years. And I barely even refilled, so... I usually shoot, like, a half hopper a game. It's 100 balls a game, roughly. I got 2,000 per case. It's pretty decent. Don't even go through a case every time. I used to go through two cases a day. <laughs> 140 bucks a time, something like that. Plus, an, plus admittance, just unbelievably. Had like no money after that. That's why I stopped playing too, because I was being irresponsible, trying to play with you know my friends, but like just not paying attention to the cost of everything. Okay, I need to get him to do this jump again. Oh, I need to get him to do a jump again another time. Need to escape. One more time, dude. Because we need to get the Physic Flask changed back. You lift your leg and you hear a loud crack, or your knee twists and you hear a loud crack? Oh no. Did you injure yourself a long time ago? You're 15, you built a paintball field with about five buddies and word got around in your high school. A year later, it turned into a full airball field. Oh, that's amazing, dude. I used to build uh, teepees in the woods and we would do 1v1s or like 2v2s in the forest because there's an area we went to where like we knew the people that lived that bordered the um, like the forest and they would be okay with it. They'd ride their ATVs there and stuff like that. Um, so they'd be like, yeah, you can totally do it. <laughs> but it wasn't technically legal. <laughs> and I have videos of it too. It's funny. I found some on my computer, actually. I guess, well, they're on my email, actually, not my computer. But yeah, I found them on the uh, my old email. Amazing. And what we would do is we'd do it when it was cold sometimes. So the balls would be frozen, man. That's a whole nother kind of situation there. 
it's different. It's a different kind of experience. Nothing is ever technically legal. Well, this was genuinely not because like there were people that would walk through the area, but they weren't walking in the area we were in. We found our own little like area within the area that was concealed to, to make these teepees and these these setups and everything. So like there wouldn't it wouldn't be possible that someone could get hit with a ball or anything, but there's people walking above us. Like up like way, way higher up above us. So they could like see down into it. It was pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, the people that lived over in the area that like bordered it, they would just like come through and wave. So it's funny. Prevented a thorn, a husk, the only way, and become my purpose. So I'd like you to the flame then and guide you. Shall I turn? Let my share them with me. Your th All right, man. The run to fire giant. Are you allowed to quit during boss fights in the run? Uh, I'm not allowed to quit out at all in this run. Okay, I'm gonna use the stamina again, and I gotta switch it back. Still clean, yeah, that was pretty good. Because all he can do there is he, he can get hit even if he doesn't do the swords right away. Because I hit him with damage so early before he was able to react. He can like jump away, but then he still has to do that same attack after. At that amount of health, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So we should be good there every time. Oh, I, I didn't drink the Physic Flask. That was kind of a waste. I used it, but I didn't drink it. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. Hey, Wood, thank you for the three months, man. Welcome back. Only up for Killer Kid. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm trying to finish up this run, see, see if we can pull it off. How are you? Imagine seeing that in real life, a naked purple guy with a spear jumping around on roofs. <laughs> that would be the coolest thing ever. I would take pictures, and I would hope that he would return. I would yell at him. I'd be like, hey, visit us again. Come back. I, need, I would be like, I need an interview. And I'd just be like, what were you thinking when you decided to not wear clothes today on this wonderful occasion and jump across rooftops with a spear? Like, oh, well, I was just uh, in the neighborhood. Thought I'd swing by. It's like, oh, what? What? what I, I hate to ask the question, sir. I'm sorry if this offends you. Why are you purple? Be like, oh. <laughs> and, and then I and then I would get punched or something. I'm Paz. Thank you for the prime sub. Enjoy your emotes. Welcome. Now we need a neck reacher emote. We do. No, I was saying that for sure. We need a neck reacher emote. It was way too funny to not have an emote of it. What would be more shocking? The fact that he's purple or had the spear? I think the fact that he's purple would be more shocking to me. Because, like, there was a video that I saw of a guy that was road raging, and he pulled out a fucking samurai sword <laughs> from his trunk. So if there's people running around with samurai swords in their freaking car, a guy with a spear running across a roof would not, like, the spear would not be the interest to me as much. It would be the fact he's purple.
one of these days you'll be as good as Thanos and you'll be able to own every boss in this game. He's got to practice. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. We need we need Thanos quotes, and I need to I need to have them on a soundboard where I can activate them with a the hotkey every time he beats somebody. Watching the progression this run's been awesome, Elijah. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, it's it's crazy now that the consistency is so good that even today we got to run back to almost where we were earlier um, when, when I did that stream earlier today. And then even yesterday, too, there's been tons of runs that lately that are good. I was uh, worried that there might have been a fluke where maybe I have a hard time starting a run for a while. I'm not to say there can't be bad days still, but just it's very consistent now. K-Tribe, what's going on? Yeah, this is the second stream tonight. So I did one earlier in the day. Then I ended around 3.30ish, or like just after 3. And then we came back around 9.15. And then tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing, except for the first stream tomorrow is going to be around uh, probably at the latest, like... 12.30ish maybe, till um, about 3.30 at the latest. Um, just because I have to do some stuff with family, and I have to pick them up. So I gotta end and then go get them. And then uh, I'll be back again after they go home, after I drop them off, so. That will be pretty easy to pull off, but... When I come back, it'll be probably 9 to 9.30 again, so it'll be the same kind of thing as tonight. And then if, I, if for whatever reason, like, maybe there's something else that comes up or I'm just, like, tired or something like that, I'll let you guys know, but I should be able to do both streams tomorrow again, too. In the morning, I would be live way earlier, and I would just do a consistent one until, probably, when I plan on ending, but... Problem is, I got a meeting with Carson to finish up the merch, and uh, I don't want to miss that, because I want to get the merch finished for you guys. The Elden Ring design, it looks really cool. And I believe that, or I mean, I'm pretty confident, I don't know, I'll let him kind of be the judge of it. But it seems like he could finish the line work that's needing to be done. There's only like one more character. He's got to sketch the rest of Millennia with like the permanent line work, the final draft of it. Every other line for every other character is done. I think he might have to add some small details and then he has to color it. So I don't know how typically long it takes him to color, but I booked a two hour meeting with him. And, um, yeah, that'll be keeping me busy until, like, roughly 12.30. While he was doing that, too, what I was going to do is remake the, the Squill sub emote. And I was going to make a new one that's just the middle piece of the sub. So you can add a center to the sub. <laughs> and then I might upload some other emotes that I have on my computer, too, to the extra slots. So we have some more. And I might also just start recording some videos, too. So I have to fill up that time. Watching from prison, what's going on, Juan? How are you doing, dude? That's like the meme where it's like, Stolen laptop, neighbor's Wi-Fi, not subscribed, free entertainment. Is the merch going to be limited run, or will it keep up indefinitely? It should be available forever, to be honest. Um, maybe the designs will be changed, but like once I launch the store with Stream Elements, it's print to order, so you guys can just order something and then they'll print it. And they'll sh they should be able to ship it internationally or to like a large amount of locations. And the the store on there will have multiple designs live at once, so you'll be able to pick between at least like five to ten designs with a bunch more added later. There's a, there's a few of them already finished that are really good. And then some of them I actually just made emotes that were already... Um, like vectored by Carson, so they were like made to be on merch. So I already have a sample of Squill Prey, or no, sorry, Squill Sip, and it turned out really good. I have a hoodie of it, um, and I have a t-shirt of it that's really good. I love the material that they use, and dude, the actual fucking shirts are amazing. They fit so nicely. The, the hoodie is the same hoodie, so I have, okay, one of my favorite hoodies I've ever had in my life. This is a true story. I'm not even making this up. I had a hoodie, I really enjoyed like the fit on it, like the way it like fit the body and everything and like the material had a little bit of stretch in it. And it, it, it lasted in the washing machine forever. Like it didn't get ruined or anything like that. The, um, the actual print on the one that I had, it was like a run DMC hoodie you guys might have seen before. It's in some of my Instagram posts. That was my favorite freaking hoodie, dude. I still have it too. 
And um, the hoodies that I have for the merch is the exact same hoodie as that hoodie. So I'm super excited. It's the same fabric provider, same actual shirt itself. So they're super high quality opposed to um, like the ones I've gotten before in, in previous times. It's probably screen printed opposed to uh, DTG. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, the merch is gonna be on fabric that actually I can genuinely stand behind and say, I like it. I like the, the way the, the shirts fit. I like the material, I like the hoodie material. I like the print quality, I like the pricing. Um, at least I think I do. <laughs> so we'll have to see, but yeah, um, and I'm gonna try to make it available where you can get the most variety of different options. So it could be like a hoodie, a t-shirt, for maybe there could be like women's tees that are different, like a different cut. And uh, crew necks, like sweaters that don't have hoods, that'd be nice. Someone was asking about zip ups. I think a lot of the designs won't actually work that well for a zip up, but could also look into that too and see if that could be a thing because there's gonna be a couple designs I do where I can try to purpose it as like a logo off to the side so it could be off center and then you could do a zip up. Do I still play Dark Souls 3G Man? I don't know. I might go back to it though. I haven't played it for... <laughs> Let me see. When did this game come out, guys? I haven't played it since this game came out. February? I play Dark Souls 2 PvP, Nikki Boo. Oh my god. How's it been? How's it been? I haven't seen it for a while. Um, I went back to Dark Souls 2 PvP. There was a uh, video I made on YouTube. I haven't gone back since that day, but I did a return to Dark Souls 2 PvP. And it went okay. Like, I was pretty bad at it. But it was fun, though. So I might do it again in the future for fun. There's just some really serious tryhard people on there now, so... You're memeing? That's cool. No, I, I genuinely did go back, and I'm not, I'm not like, opposed to doing it again. I have, um, like, a mule file with a bunch of characters, or, like, a thing where I can make characters pretty quickly. I bet you if I launch the game right now, I probably have a character that has everything in the game on it, so... I'd easily do it. And it is still genuinely fun. Like, there is something fun about it. February 25th. Okay, so I, I played DS3, I think, February... 23rd or 22nd or something like that because we did the blindfolded run that was the last time I played Dark Souls 3 play on PC I, I do everything on PC if I can unless the game is exclusive to PS5 Blindfold runs of Mario are crazy. I've seen that before where it's just one person. No navigator, they just do like the the speed run. Wait, we need to switch the physics flask. Let's do that quickly. Showcase in the PvP chops. Yeah, I used, to, I used to PvP on PS4 quite a bit. Because I didn't have a PC that could run the game that well. I played Dark Souls 3 since the servers came back. I actually never got into Dark Souls 3 PvP. Megatron. I tried it very briefly. I think I tried it twice. It's like the exact same amount of times I tried it on this game. I barely played it. Fire Giant, let's go. What you got? Jump. No jump. Just a regular wave. It's fine, I 
can work with that. This is going to work for the, the stagger. We can try it. Pretty good right away. Nice. Make Fire Giant look easy, KK Tribe. That was definitely not a good attempt on it, because, uh, like, when I, you notice, like, when I hit his heel the first time, the second time I hit his hand instead, because it was blocking his heel. And then I threw off the damage, so I had to do two extra attacks that aren't really supposed to happen on phase two. Or, sorry, phase one. I was kind of worried, but, um, the damage was still fine. Thank you, though, I appreciate it. It's not too bad if you know what you're doing. If you have the exact damage I have, or close, you mainly just make him um, roll away in phase one, and then you stagger him on the roll away after doing three attacks that are charge R2s. And then the next attack is another charge R2 that should send him into phase two. If not, then you just have to do a couple extra attacks between that are normal. And um, after that, you can do two attacks on his hand with charge R2s and then a poke, like an R1 light attack. That should stagger him, and then you do two char charges on his um, eyeball. That'd be good. Have you ever rode off the chain here during the run? I think I did on a run that was way earlier, but not for a long time though. It's been a while. I as well Is the fire giant easy? He's become way easier for sure. My he, there's a couple things he can do. Like the, the, that fight was scary because in phase um, one, he was doing the shield slam and he, uh, he was doing it off screen. So I couldn't really see it. The foot slamming on the ground almost hit me. That was really crazy. It's freaking me out a little bit. Why are you Thanos? Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you be Thanos? Honestly, I like making characters that are pop culture related. So I made Sonic before. Homer Simpson was another character we made. Uh, I did Richard Hammond. Richard Hammond from Top Gear. Sorry, and then. Uh, we made Harambe into a person. And then we did... Ah, oh, what else? What other kind of characters have we made? We made we made a bunch of, like, random archetypes. You made Hammond? I did make Richard Hammond, but it's, like, a really scary-looking Richard Hammond, though. It's definitely not what you think. And the only reason that, like... Technically, he's called Richard Hammond is because I made the character first and someone's like, that looks like Richard Hammond. I was like, he does. But like just in a really sketchy way, like an alien one. So if you go and watch the bow only hitless run on my YouTube, or even if you just type in exclamation or not even, sorry, uh, type in bow only zero hit run on YouTube, you should be able to find it. And the thumbnail, the guy that's in that thumbnail is Richard Hammond. Is <laughs> make James May, can make everybody. Like Chris Harrison as well. And Jeremy Clarkson. Ooh, dude, I wonder if you run through this area straight, that changes some stuff. Something's going on in the corner there. That's really weird, dude. You guys see like all that red? What was that red in the side of the room there? I am not sure what was happening. Dude, and this, this dude's still attacking me from like way back up there. Excuse me. I think so.
First green guy, now red guy. Can you make Ronnie Coleman? Dude, we can make Ronnie Coleman. That would be pretty funny. Problem is, the character only goes as, like, it's so big. Like, so Thanos is pretty big, right? Ronnie Coleman is definitely, like, twice the size of Thanos, so... It'd be really hard to, uh, to make him accurate. How many sleeping pots do we have? We have five. Okay, we have to be a bit more careful on this part. I think I missed some of the mushrooms, but... We should have enough still. Just gotta be a bit careful. We need Yoda. See, I wish you could mod the game to make a short character. And maybe they have the same hitbox as a tall character, but Yoda would needs to be like properly short for him to really shine the way he's supposed to. You know? Only way to make a real Yoda. That's a beautiful setup there. Jump. Nice, thank you. We got easy mode on these guys. They stay asleep forever. It's a very long time. I don't think they stay asleep forever, though. They'd be a little bit broken. Should have hit him as he was going down so I could get an extra hit on him. See how he tries to jump away there. There we go. Can get pretty sketchy. Run looks nice, Jill. Yeah, we only have this running section left, that's it, and then we're done all the running. No more enemies and areas. It's ironic that this running section is probably the, one of the hardest ones, and like it's the last one you have to do. Like, at least for me, it's pretty challenging. But I don't know. Oh, you know, I could level here again. I'm starting to think with plus 10 too, we could do Gideon with more endurance, but I'm gonna still level strength here just for the birds. Just in case. Bird is on the hunt, dude. It's out for blood. Sketchy. Soon a myriad of buffs. Just because these things explode forever.
You gotta do buffs again. Back. No more lightning, please. Just stop the lightning for a second. Dragon guy, give me mercy, dude. I need the bow here so I can go do this. Fly away! He definitely listened to Nelly Furtado before he did that. It's like, I'm like a bird, but I'm actually a dragon. I don't know what I'm guarding, but Thanos picked it up. And now he's got a plus 10. <laughs> if anyone remembers uh, when Nelly Furtado was on the radio, you lived a good life. I'm just going to say that. You lived a pretty solid life, and I'm proud of you. We're there for the good times. Okay, this is pretty sketchy, dude. Oh my god. No thanks on that part. I want to rebuff again here, but I'm just not sure. Just genuinely not sure if this is going to work. Hope this holds the whole area, dude. This is uh, very dangerous here. Because as soon as I get to this wall, I guess I can rebuff here too. Okay. It's all good. If he sees me by default, I don't think he does. Good. Yo, run, dude! Holy fucking ball sacks. Oh my god. <laughs> that was frightening. Holy shit. I didn't throw the knife at the best spot. <sighs> Heart attacks, man. Okay, we're just gonna rest. That's the end, end of the running sections. At least we did all the running sections. Sponsored by Skechers. <laughs> Sponsored by Clammy Hands. Jeez. fucking ball sacks <laughs> that was definitely there's no other words i could use there that was just a holy ball sacks moment just balls by itself wouldn't be enough it would have to be also the uh the containment of such family jewels that would suffice okay um got light equip load we're good there all right do you ever watch videos of rats climbing their way to toilets? <laughs> what? Rats climbing their way to toilets? I do, I kind of want to see that now. Because I've seen videos of rats doing really funny things, so... Just, it would just add to the very big list of animals doing things you're not supposed to that I've seen. Actually, I don't know if anyone's seen the video. There's a dog that was supposed to be like acting like a monkey that I saw recently. That's really funny. There's like a tiny little dog that was climbing a, like a screen door like a monkey. It's absolutely amazing. Love it. Oh, Malchus coming. He's going for me. Okay, okay, okay.
beautiful. That was British, should be like, holy flying shit bag. There you go. Only <laughs> instantly demonetized. <laughs> I just realized. It's popped in, Coach Carter. Oh yeah, let's go, man. Let's go. How are you doing? Atmosphere, you're insane. I, you're insane for watching this, but I appreciate it, dude. We're all insane right now. We were talking about glowing green guys earlier. What's more insane than that? <laughs> want to say on the record if i beat this this run and miyazaki sees it please in the dlc put a glowing green thing that grabs your neck and kills you in one hit <laughs> you just have to you don't have a choice and make me really happy it's my special request the neck reacher we have to call him neck reacher or you could you could be like kind of fancy be like neck reacher of the lands from afar or something like that <laughs> Neck reacher from inside the door. <laughs> How long have I practiced to try to beat this? We've been on this uh, run for almost a month now. I think we're at near the end of the... F or or we're, we're in like the fourth week somewhere. At least since we've started counting the hits. Like since we've gotten the first PB ever. It's been like probably three weeks plus since the, the PB of 101 hits that we got. I'm not sure how long it took other people to do this run, though. I gotta, I gotta start asking around just to see. I'm curious. Neck Reacher, Reacher the next. <laughs> I'll be the first person to do this. Not the first person. Um, but I would say I'm one of the first people to do any percent on the newest patch, just because it's been updated a lot. Not that that is a huge deal, but for me, it's, it's going to be a very big deal, because I really like this game. I've been enjoying doing this. It's been quite the uh, experience. It's been some moments. Definitely been some some times we've had. Ah, Very questionable times. I knew you'd come to stand before the Elden Some good Ring times too. To become Elden Lord. What a sad state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas, none shall take the throne. Queen Marquez. I know in my bones. Who got the first no head on this game, Scuddy? Uh, I think Gino did, didn't he? Chalupa, it's one of them. Yeah, it's one of the things I do full time. I put quite a bit of hours in the streaming. I stream seven days a week, but um, I do other stuff too. I do YouTube as well. Um, I started doing like personal fitness plans and uh, what's it called, like nutrition plans as well for people. Which it's it's just kind of starting right now. I've, I've done a, like a couple, and I have a third one coming up. So it's brand new. Um, I want to keep doing that for the, the long term and then eventually make like set meal plans people can buy or fitness and meal plan packages for different goals that are like template ones. But I'm doing like dedicated ones and trying to coach people and hopefully they can teach themselves after that. It's another thing. And then um, doing some music for a video game coming up. And I also invest quite a bit. I invest in a lot of different stuff. And also, I guess, if you want to count sponsorships, that's either aside from just the regular stuff we'd stream or we'd make videos for, there's that too. So technically, yeah, that's, that's like the array of different things. Oh, Gino was second. Bushido was the first person to get this game. Damn, okay, so he's the first person to get this. And he was also the first person to get the God Run 3. Damn, that's that's huge, man. Insane. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. I'm writing a book all about the things I should be doing with my life. I'm calling it my autobiography. <laughs> Atu and my Atu biography. Scarl, thank you for the 14 months. Welcome back, dude.
So I'm not going to go for the punish there. I'm just going to keep it kind of chill. a lot of stompies that I'm not a fan of. Is rude guy. this positioning either so I gotta escape. This is how you thought Gino's barefoot move uh, fight would look like the damage I was doing there. <laughs> oh no, you're talking about him punching me and stuff like that. Gino in his run would look like Horolo, yeah. <laughs> oh man, so we made it back to the all-time distance PB here. Just good news. Yeah, I'm still light low with that. That's good. And keep the shard on. Use the flask first on this. I don't know if it's going to make a difference. Probably won't. That wouldn't matter at all.
Got to re redo Radagon again because uh, <laughs> Elden Beast was funny there. Damn. Never had that happen before. Elden Sus indeed, dude. That was like, oh well. He was funny indeed. My headphones being glitchy. I said my headphone was being glitchy in real life. That's how you know I'm like focused on the run, dude. Jeez. It's a very weird thing to say, isn't it? Dude, I did it. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is so fucking awesome, dude. And we did two Radagons. Two fucking Radagons, dude. And the green guy was talked about on this run. We got the glowing fucking neck reacher. In this run. In organic dialogue. That is the best run ever, dude. Best run ever. In still 217. Not too bad. Only two minutes over my goal. So the world might be mended. Oh, I'm so glad GG. we did that, dude. Congrats. My heart was a little go. It was, get, it was getting going. My heart was getting going on the first well, Radagon. It was a little bit more chill the second so time, the for whatever reason. So the world might be dude, mended. that's sick. GG. All right, if you guys have never seen a zero hit run before, there you go. That is it. First ever Elden Ring challenge run I've completed as well, and it is a zero hit run. Let's go. Glitchless, any percent, no skips. You were here. Say hi to YouTube. I'm going to expand chat on the screen. There you go. I'm so happy right now. That was, that was a wild run, too. We did, dude, we did a, a super long fight with Godfrey. It did not go as planned, and then two Radagons at the end. That I did not expect any of that shit. That was that shows we practice, man. That shows, for sure. Oh man, I appreciate you guys being here. I really appreciate it. Um, for anyone that's watching this video on YouTube once it's uploaded, if you like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your favorite moment in the run. Hit the notification bell. Thank you. And also, uh, yeah, come join the chat on the stream because it's really fun. I stream pretty much every day. Across the fog, the lands between. Really cool victory music playing right now too. I'm excited, man. This is so cool. Look back upon us and look away. <laughs> I can't believe we actually did it. That's crazy. An age we also did the run in a way that's not necessarily the best way to do it either. Like, there's some things that were super optimal, but like, there's a lot of strategies I used that were kind of sketchy, to be honest. <laughs> and it was really GG. fun. Um, yeah, anybody that's watched this whole process, you guys are amazing.
even if you just tuned in now i mean thank you i know some people only got to watch whenever they could but especially if you've watched the full thing and you were here like as much as you could be it it definitely kept me going quite a bit because there, there were some resets that were pretty rough on this that you know i guess it's always like that but just i think the attitude towards this run was pretty good you're here almost every day yeah some of you like jill i know you were here quite a lot too some of you guys were here pretty much every day so i really appreciate that it means a lot and like I, more so not even because like i feel like um, it's required for the run, but I think we had a lot of really good streams the last month. I think this last month has been the best time I've had streaming since the first playthrough of this game, to be honest. So, um, like, I took a break for about two months. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice there's probably a lack of uploads and everything. I just took a break from all video games in general, so coming back and doing this is really fun. I'm glad I did it. b -Sweat, thank you for the, uh, the GGs as well, man. I'm gonna, wait, I'm gonna catch up with all the alerts really quick. I think I missed some of the things. Um, Featherless Biped, thank you for the brand new sub, dude. Thank you for all the congrats, everybody. Uh, Fab, thank you for the, the bits as well. I appreciate it. Queso King, thank you for the 200 bits. Anonymous, thank you for the gifted sub to K-Tribe. Gong Show, thank you for the gifted sub to NJ Chopper as well. Um, just making sure I didn't miss anything else. Cam, thank you for the 100 bits. Pharmacy Doc, thank you for the 100 bits. Spawn, thank you for gifting um, Miata uh, a sub as well. And, um, dude, I'm so fucking happy right now. Oh, today was such a good day, dude. This is a good Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving today as well, by the way. Shout out to all the Canadians. Got to play some crazy paintball, which you can see on Instagram if you want to go check that out. Should be in the description of the video. I'll put up some more clips in the future, but play best best game or best day of paintball I've had in my life. Good stream earlier. We had a really good run earlier. We had a good good run now. Hilarious, dude. Like some of the best discussions we've had today. I laughed the hardest I've laughed in a long time at that green guy thing. That was so funny. <laughs> um, thank you again, guys. Ex Exalted, thank you for the prime sub. Welcome. Um, Brave Boy Sean, thank you for gifting. Um, Soyuz a sub and Buffalo Magnum. Thank you for gifting Divine Catharsis a sub. Welcome. Please say thank you. Anybody that got gifted a sub, say thank you to whoever gifted you a sub as well. Wear the smiley shirt. The, the smiley shirt's in the washing machine. I don't even have it right now. What's next? So after this, we're going to do a soul level one run tomorrow. I'm going to start it off with um, the first stream of tomorrow. And then I'm going to take a break and do some stuff with family. Come back again around probably 9.30 p.m. the latest EST and do another late stream like this. Uh, and then for the rest of the week, we should have normal streams. Uh, John, you just got here. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. You missed it. I'm going to I'm going to be putting this video on YouTube, though. This will be live on YouTube. Um, it should be there. So the day I want to say either tomorrow now, morning or Wednesday morning. One of the two. Um, because it's going to take some time to process as a highlight. It's not super long, but uh, what I will do is. I'll stick around for a little bit to see if it processes before I go to bed. And then if it does, I'll upload it. And then, um, yeah, at the very latest Wednesday morning, it'll be on YouTube. And Miata, thank you for the bits as well, dude. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, that's that's basically it. That's the credits and everything. We got to take all this hype before Let's it uh, be granted, so the world dies out. We got to we got to take this excitement and, and surprise so somebody with a host. Might be mended. Yeah, also, G Thanos G has to say G goodbye G to you. Wait, let me let me do this properly. There's only one thing I can do to make this real. One second. I don't want to use microphone on YouTube. What's it doing that? So. Thanos did it himself. There you go. <laughs> Alright. That's it.